So at this point, uh, can we, we're not going to do the opening thing, but can we show them the name of the drug? Yes. <laughs> yes. That Dr. Gwen Can is, we say it? I said it perfect last time. Molnupiravir. Hey, look at that. Oh, man. We should do it in harmony. No. 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 <laughs> no. All right. We haven't practiced harmony, but we will be talking about molnupiravir because it's, as Gwen said, it's a <clears throat> game changer. <laughs> Sorry. Thought for a so, second I couldn't hear you. Something's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Enough with jokes about not being able to. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to spit. Yeah, All right. Geez. So. Now that we covered that and that there was no caramel, let's go ahead yeah. and tell them what molnupiravir is. Molnupiravir. Yeah, let's talk about that. So uh, what they're expecting. Molnupiravir was introduced by Merck. It is an antiviral Merck. medication, um, meaning that it works directly to inhibit virus replication, I believe. Uh, it is in the same class of medications as Tamiflu, which we were trying to remember the generic name of earlier, but we couldn't remember. Wrestletamivir? Oh, that sounds right. It's close. That sounds, sounds right. Anyways, so uh, all those that end in veer are, are antiviral. So, um, yeah, this is yeah. the newest one, and they did some studies on it, and I have uh, published some of the data. It's there. Uh, the studies are ongoing, going, but it was good enough that they have submitted their data to the FDA for emergency use authorization. Um, and uh, this would be the first oral medication approved by the FDA to treat COVID. First oral, because they actually have remdesivir, which, yes, is, which is an antiviral. An, on the now, end. is it sub-Q or is it IV? I think it's IV. IV, yeah. IV believe, yeah. So if, if you're at risk, meaning like you, you have, you're over 65 and you're overweight and you have hypertension and you got COVID or, or, or you just got exposed to COVID. Yeah. You go to the emergency department, and I, I'm sorry, what I'm thinking You're of thinking is of the monoclonal antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies. Yeah. That's another treatment, but it's also, again, IV. You go to the emergency department, you get this, and you have a less chance of getting sick and needing hospitalization. This would be actually something you take by mouth. Yeah. Two tablets a day or a tablet twice daily for five days. For five days, yeah. Which is the same as the... Exact same. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's for the treatment. But do we know if it's also good as a prophylactic like we use the antivirals for influenza? You know, somebody... I don't think they they submitted it for that. Uh, Those studies are, yeah, ongoing, I believe. So right now it was just for treatment. um, And it was pretty impressive. So the the numbers showed that... Makes a difference. um, Those who got the treatment... Uh, 14 versus placebo. So those who got the placebo, 14.1% of them were uh, either admitted or died from COVID uh, versus those who got the treatment, it was 7.3% were either admitted or or died from COVID. So that's almost a 50% reduction in um, hospitalization and mortality. That's pretty good. Okay. Actually, right. actually very good. I'd like it better than that. I'd what, like it better what, than that too. Yeah, what's better than that? Uh, vaccination. <laughs> oh, oh! Just get your vaccine ahead of time. Much lower yeah, mortality. Yeah, may, maybe we Much should lower focus hospitals. more on prevention rather than treatment. So, so yeah. there are some um, restrictions uh, it, it, when you when you look at this medication. It's it, it's definitely good to have a, a treatment, but it's going to have its um, uh, areas where you know it's not going to be as ideal. So, for uh, Tamiflu, for treating the flu, we often well, not we often you need to catch treatment within uh, 48 hours of um, uh, getting your flu symptoms, right? Yeah. So, to, for the treatment to be effective, and I'm pretty confident that for this one, oh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> look at this, like, hey. <laughs> Laura, All we right. missed you last week at the very oh, end of the Andy, show. Yeah. You did a super Everyone's... chat, and now you do it in the middle of the show. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the throwback to silent movies. <laughs> we should have had that, like, so sorry. You're so good. That, to that us. music they have in the, in the background. Yeah. We should have, we should have had like somebody any, playing any on the sound. piano. Yeah, any, that would probably would have been helpful. Any, any sound at all. We'll send Holly off to learn piano for our <laughs> silent shows. We'll figure out a way that it's right. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, but I just had to yeah, thank acknowledge you. Laura there. I appreciate there. that. Very Where happy. was I? I was talking about, oh, treatment uh, time frame. So it's probably going to be similar where you need to uh, get the treatment in within a certain amount of time uh, for it to be effective. Okay. Yeah. So 14% versus 7%. 
we're still not happy that it's seven percent of people. Now that wasn't a mortality rate; that was hospitalized. hospitalization and mortality. Yes. Okay, I, okay. I was yeah, trying and to I don't think they separated the two. The primary endpoint was both of those. So, yeah. so in the um, press release that they put out, it was hospitalization and death. Yeah, and and the title of this program is good or bad. Is, yeah, is it good or bad? Well, obviously, just, absolutely, having a treatment is good. Yeah, absolutely. Seven percent less that. people having to be hospitalized is, is absolutely a good thing. But our preference is that they don't get sick in the first place by right. getting vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, we're we're talking a fifty percent reduction there. Whereas if you get vaccinated. Um, much better than that. So it was originally 95% reduced yeah. to 80% with Delta, maybe tapering off after some time. But if you get that yeah. third booster, it bu boost, bumps you back up to that 80%. That's much better. And that's, yeah. and that's you know, Let me pass that on for so everything. So you, don't, so you don't need to get in within a certain time for that one. Um, you get it. You're two weeks out from your vaccination. You have that protection. It's there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we still would recommend vaccination over this treatment, but it is good to have something. Okay. So if there aren't comments or questions on the, uh, I already can't say it, molnupiravir, I guess. Molnupiravir. I think I, said, I think I got it correctly. So uh, what I'd like to do is give them an update on what's going, <laughs> yes, thank you, what's going on with the, well, we talked so much about the vaccines and you even said something about it waning efficacy sure, over time. Yeah. That's the big subject right now is, oh, the vaccines in the people who got them six months ago aren't quite as strong. But I think one of the things that is not emphasized enough in the message getting out is they're still really good. Right. <laughs> Even with declining uh, efficacy, they're still really good. We yep. still have a lot of protection from uh, the virus from the, with these um, vaccines. And, of course, I, I've said it before, the real good way to combat our risk for getting further variants that are dangerous to us is not getting a third shot in the United States, but rather getting first shots in other parts More, of the world yeah. where these variants come from. Okay, they, they could come from the United States, too, but uh, the parts of the world where it's spreading rampantly is, is where you're typically going to see the, the variants occur because right. just there's more spreading going on. But... You not getting your shot at your local pharmacy is not going to make that shot somehow appear in a third world country for a doctor or a nurse to get it there. Right. So, yeah, if it's available to you, you might as well get it, is, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So it looks like, uh, well, we already have the Pfizer approved for many groups of people. In fact, the only people it's not approved for are super healthy adults. <laughs> Under the age Pretty of 65 yeah. uh, and adolescents, I believe. I don't know if they got they a third. They don't need a yeah, yeah. third. No. So the Moderna shot looks like it will probably be available to the same people. The um, Anybody over 65, people who are at risk because of either where they work or where they live, and people who have some kind of especially high risk for it, immune compromise concerns. They'll also be able to get six months after they got their last Moderna shot, get get one. Uh, that's going through the FDA. Right. And then Friday, they talked about Johnson & Johnson. And some of us yeah. thought that they might say, get either uh, one mRNA shot or the other rather than a Johnson & Johnson. The, and yeah. that's not what happened. Yeah. Something kind of unexpected by a lot of people happened. They said, well, really... Everybody that had Johnson & Johnson, get another Johnson & Johnson. <laughs> and I think they want it to be a couple months after the first one. Right. Yeah, that's 50, what they 50-something days. Was. It, I, there was a quote from the discussion uh, during the meeting by the Verpac, the Vaccines and Related Products, Related Biologics Products uh, Advisory Committee or Council to the FDA. The, somebody had a quote got out saying it, it should have been two shots in the first place. It never should have been. A one-shot vaccine. One. Yeah. And, and when we saw the numbers come out, that's that's what it looked like. We, it, it looked like one shot of an mRNA vaccine, but they said it's one and done. Well, now now, now go get your second chance. Yeah, I'll get your Johnson & Johnson. Boosted up to the mRNA yeah. va vaccine status. But we still may yet, you know, the FDA has not had the final <laughs> say on this. And I think it's going through the CDC ACIP also, does it? doesn't it? Um, yeah, I think so. So we may yet have somebody change this to, no, don't get a second Johnson & Johnson, get an mRNA for your second shot. It could still happen. Yeah, yeah, right now. It's we're we're just watching up, up in the air. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, 
much smaller subset of people who got the J&J vaccine compared to it, it, yeah, it is. who got the mRNA vaccines. Yeah, and I, I'm still more of a fan of the mRNA vaccines given all the numbers and the blood clots and everything else yep. and other concerns. Um, might as well just talk about adverse events from the, the vaccine. So a lot of people are aware of myocarditis with the second dose of the mRNA vaccines. Yeah. And I'm not Mostly totally clear on if it's males, more with adolescents. one or the other. No, I think it's the same. Okay. Yeah. And the numbers are the highest in males and in that late teens yeah, age group. Yeah, adolescent. And true. even with that, you're, you're more likely, without the vaccine, to catch COVID and get myocarditis. With COVID. Than if you got the <laughs> vaccine to get myocarditis. Yeah. So... Yeah, I think the numbers are... You're um, still better off getting the vaccine, <laughs> even with... Yeah, with 2.7 per 100,000 for with the vaccine, 2.7 cases uh, out of 100,000 um, versus 10 out of 100,000 for COVID. You know, you get COVID, it's got its own set of effects, and myocarditis is one of those. Yeah. So it's... Um, yeah. and, and I saw slightly different numbers uh, with the, the studies I was looking at. And they're yeah. from different countries. And yeah, there's a couple different studies. Looking same through. conclusion in a way. <laughs> Even when it looks a little bit close, it's still better on the vaccine. Plus all of the other things that happen with it, like the post-COVID. Yeah. Um, so somebody is asking like about breakthrough cases. I've heard of fully vaccinated people catching COVID. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're talking about that. And we're yeah, seeing that. Small numbers, uh, though. Uh, yeah, much, much letter, lesser. And when they do have the COVID, it seems to be a much lesser or uh, yeah. uh, least severe. General Colin Powell. Severe. Yeah, heard about that. Fully vaccinated but died of COVID. Right. And uh, when they look at, so I think it's two thirds of the entire population or two thirds of adults are fully vaccinated right now. And yet, even with two thirds being fully vaccinated, uh, they're still only making up 10%. Right. Of yeah. hospitalizations for COVID. So you're, you're much better off with the vaccine than right. without. But uh, yeah, there are vaccine failures. And, and I think it's more so since Delta variant. And also more so since Delta variant is the number of people hospitalized per the number of people that get infected. Yeah, yeah, that but, is up. It seems to be a little more. Variant. And also it's a much younger group that's getting hospitalized compared Which to. Which are the people who are unvaccinated. Um, yeah, more yeah. often, so that seems yeah. to correlate. Uh, as far as local numbers here in Placer County, where we are, we are getting the numbers down of new infections. Yay! And, and what's following behind is number of hospitalizations, and following behind that is ICU capacity or ICU beds down, being yeah. used by COVID patients, which even now, it's still about at the level it was at the very highest peak back in January for right. Placer County ICUs. But it's going down. It's going down for ICUs, going down for uh, hospital beds overall. New infections have already gone down, or go, but not down to the level they were back in June when yeah, you know, we were you know, asking patients. Living carefree. If they wanted to take their mask off. and Just in breathing room. air unfiltered. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Get, getting closer. We're, do, do that it outside. looks like we're going that direction, so I'm very happy about that. And yeah. happy that our, our viewers are going to be able to also. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything new from the uh, peanut gallery? <laughs> I say that with the utmost affection. It was always like what my parents would say when I was like making making like, comments in the back yeah, seat. Yeah, in the back seat when someone's going. <laughs> we don't need directions from the peanut gallery. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So with that, yeah, uh, we'll have to figure out how to start this video like halfway <laughs> through for after the fact. But we do appreciate you watching and we are paying attention to the people who are showing up on Patreon and updating the uh, little scroll at the end where we put the names of the people who want to be a part of the Auburn Medical Group channel and specifically this live stream. Yep. Uh, and you'll see your name there. And for anybody who wants it, that's available to you. Also. This show does get uh, put in front of people's eyes as more people subscribe to it and watch it. So sharing it with people that you think would appreciate our humor <laughs> or, or, or or share it with your deaf friends so they can yeah, translate it for you. you. And for those <laughs> of you that watch this after the fact, we we edited this after it got on YouTube. So you would see the show after we did it with no sound. So. Yeah. 
so it looks better to them. That's right. Anybody Good thing they couldn't to... hear all that cursing. Those that that cursing. Those that's right. Yeah. Just throw it around here. That Anybody you want to especially thank? Yeah, absolutely. So over at uh, Dr. Green Knight, my blog, uh, often what we talk about on Mondays is um, put on there. So so that's what it was about today yeah. about molnupiravir. There's a link in the description to uh, check that out. And while you're over there, subscribe to that. So you can, yeah. um, you know, know what's coming on uh, most of the time on these Monday uh, more, more Monday afternoon chats. Yeah. Um, every once in a while, I do release those a little earlier to my Patreon uh, followers. Um, so thank you. Uh, over at Patreon, you can check that out. Yeah. And Teresa Raw is one of those. Thank you for what you do. You make it happen. Yes. And uh, I am Dr. Mark Vaughn or at Dr. Vaughn on the, uh, the Twitters. And you can find me there. Until next time, Dr. Hey. Wayne, Dr. Mark Vaughn telling you to stay in good health. Doctors, thank you for another informative session. Auburn Medical Group is located in Auburn, California, USA. Thank you for participating. Please tell a friend and join us again next week. Okay.